Those people aren't wearing masks. No, when you buy. We are here at Navy Pier. Nasakay ba ako dyan? Hello, mahal! Hello! How are you doing? Sobrang init! Sobrang ganda na ng weather dito. Sasakay kami sa boat. Ayun yung boat na sasakyan. Bili kaming ticket. For how many minutes, mahal? 30? 30 minute lake front. Thirty-four for one person. That's how it's for thirty. The van, ganda ng weather. Shoreline sightseeing, and we're doing an architecture tour where we're gonna go into the canals inside Chicago and look at the architecture along the canal system. It's like we are on a ferry or boat. What is it? Yeah, it could be a ferry. Ferry or boat. Seeing dito sa Chicago yung mga building. Dito kami sa lake. Sa lake kami dadaan. Ayan. Ito tour niya kami dyan sa buong building. Yan sa paligid ng lake. May kamahalan siya. How much is this mahal? 41 plus 395 in tax. Per person? Per person. Si parang $45 na din. Magkano yun sa peso? Parang $2,000. $2,000 per person. Para itour ka. For 40 minutes, itour ka nila dyan sa buong lake. So I'll be using the Chicago City flag as it prompts this flag directly to our left right here. Our white 
flag with two blue stripes and four red stars, each of them with their own important historical significance and symbolism. By the time we get back to our dock here, you will be a Chicago history and architecture whiz kid, I assure you. Now, a few very important safety announcements. First and foremost, we are a Coast Guard inspected vessel, which means we have life jackets on board for everyone here, located in these white boxes here. In a very unlikely event of emergency, our crew members will help you put those on. Second thing, second, please do not stand or kneel on any of these benches. Please keep all arms and legs inside the ride at all times. We will be passing under some very low bridges today. Please resist the very human urge to reach up and touch something that might take your hand clean off. And also, we have one very important life-saving apparatus for you here, and that's our full service bar in the back, of course. We have a bottle of water, chips, pretzels, as well as beer, wine, mixed drink. The uh, pink vodka, pink lemonade looks especially appetizing today. But visit early, visit often, and you should be having a great ride. Now, you are just at Navy Pier. Navy Pier. It was initially called Municipal Pier. It was then named uh, Navy Pier in 1916 for the World War I soldiers stationed inside. It was then, it then became a completely recreational pier. That is until 1941. See, we turned it into a naval base. Why is that? Because Lake Michigan is very important to us here in the United States. Lake Michigan is surrounded on all of its sides by Lake Michigan is all American water. That's why we had our naval base here. Specifically here in Chicago, we were training pilots to land and take their planes off of aircraft carriers, tribes primarily, the Council of Three Fires. That's the Potawatomi, the Ottawa, and Ojibwe tribes. We also had some Miami and Illinois tribes here as well. We didn't see our first non-indigenous settler here in Illinois until Jean-Baptiste Paul Dussard, who was an Afro-Caribbean and French immigrant. We actually don't know how he found his way up here, but he did nonetheless. Here, he understood the importance of the Chicago River, all the trade and travel that was offered by this river below. So he built his trading post in his home here at the mouth of our river. From then on, he set up one of the most advantageous travel and trade routes in the entire North American continent. He connected us. He connected us here in Chicago, all the way up to Montreal in Canada, as well as Albany, New York, and all the way down to New Orleans in Louisiana. Soon, houses began sprouting up around his trading post, a small village, and soon after. established as a township in 1833 with about 400 people. We were then established as the city of Chicago only four years later in 1837 with about 4,000 people. And that is the very beginnings of our city of Chicago, our first Red Star, Fort Dearborn. Now diving into the architecture here, on our left, you'll see three curving glass structures here. These three columns make up Vista Tower. Vista Tower, we're actually still completing the construction on this one. If you see strings hanging from this tallest, this tallest column, we are actually finishing just sealing up the windows on the top few floors. But this will be home to the five-star Vista Hotel as well as, as well as the tallest and priciest condos in our city. See the penthouse for the middle tower last year before this building was even completed went for $18.5 million. That's the fifth most expensive home sale here in Chicago. Now I was talking about finishing just sealing those windows. If you look up on the tallest tower, you can see two floors. It looks like we haven't put the windows on them yet. These are the 83rd and 84th floors. Those are actually complete. Here in Chicago, our nickname is the Windy City. That really doesn't have anything to do with our weather. We'll learn about why a little bit later. But we still experience very strong gusts of wind that causes our buildings to move side to side, to sway in the wind. 
The technical term for this is drift, and this is how Jimmy Gang and Studio Gang plans to offset drift on the Vista Tower. So that floor is completely hollow, except for the elevator shaft and these stairs, as well as the building's structural support. The idea being that instead of the face of this building, except in the front of the wind, the wind will just blow through these floors. Now directly underneath these buildings, we have Wacker Drive. This was established in the 1909 plan of Chicago. We set up the foundations of our city here and many uh, many things that we enjoy about our city of Chicago today, this being one of them. This is how we keep our city so clean. See, up top, this is where we have our pedestrian walkways. This is where we all live. This is where we all visit. We just see the top of Walker Drive here. Underneath, we have our high Walker Drive walkways. But this is also where we take out all of our trash. It's where we make all of our deliveries for the skyscrapers within our city, Lower Wacker Drive. As well as Wacker Drive in the very wee hours of the morning, this is where you can spot some of the fanciest cars in our city racing around underneath our city. It's very um, entertaining to think about, not very entertaining to be a part of, I assure you. It's a little bit scary, but if you're interested in sports cars, just at 2 a.m., head on down to Lower Wacker Drive, of course. As we come out from underneath the bridge, we'll get a beautiful view of some of the most iconic buildings in our city of Chicago today. The first one that we're going to talk about being the Wrigley Building. The Wrigley Building was completed in two foul swoops. The South Tower, the one with the clock tower on top, in 1921. The North Tower in 1924. There's a bridge connecting these towers. That was built in 1931. Because of that bridge, this is actually a tent office building with that bridge connecting it. This building is designed in a style of architecture that we call the Spanish Revival. It is the first evolution of architecture that we're going to be talking about. What is a Spanish building? Why is it right here in Chicago? We'll see our architects and designers at that time, as well as the businessmen inside these buildings. Many of them have been educated in Europe. They are subscribing to Eurocentric ideas of beauty. That's where we get these revivalist styles. See so that clock tower on top? That is almost an exact match for La Geralda clock tower on the Seville Cathedral in Seville, Spain. Now if you look at the outside of the Ruby building, you'll notice it's not just one color of tile. It's actually six different shades of terracotta tile. Terracotta tile is very important to us here in Chicago. First, it is completely fireproof. We'll learn about that so Unfortunately, terracotta tile is very delicate, as am I. It must be hand-washed once a year, as do I. But actually these were actually produced in six different shades of white and cream, the darkest being the most concentrated on the bottom here and the lightest at the top. This is meant to bring the viewer's eye upwards and towards the time. And so speaking about that time, the face of that clock, there's an urban legend that those numerals are actually W's. Unfortunately, they're just tick marks. That's just an urban legend. Being busted here on our river cruise today. Take that one to bar trivia. As we come out from underneath the bridge, you will see the second tallest building on our Chicago City skyline today. That's the Trump International Hotel in Tower. Now this building is designed in the style of architecture called contextualism. Now contextualism aims to create a conversation with the attributes about its location. Specifically, it's these patio setbacks. See, these patio setbacks aim to integrate this building into the neighborhood by matching the heights of buildings around it. At first, patio setback, matching the height of the Wrigley Building. The second, the Mather Tower, just this couple of buildings to our left here across the river. And the third, the AMA Plaza directly behind it. This is the architect, Adrian Smith, recognizing he could not have built this building in this exact location if it weren't for the others around it first. Now, Adrian Smith designed this building in 2000. He also has designed other skyscrapers around the world, including the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which is currently the tallest building on the planet. The Trump International Hotel and Tower kind of looks different uses. Up top, we have the residences. This thing are high shades. Below, we have a parking garage. On our first floor, we have restaurants, of course. We also have a corner store, a cleaners, and a pastry. Connection to the house of Blues, the former movie theater for this place, as well as an arena down below. Everything you could possibly want in one complex. Now, both of these buildings are modernist in style. 
See, an important tenet of modernism is that form follows function. Me, Spander, didn't need to create these very fancy buildings because all that was going to be going on inside was just office work. All they needed was a big, empty space to put desks. Whereas Bertrand Goldberg was designed, this is very important to us. This is where all the three branches of the Chicago River converge. The main branch, which we're on right now, the south branch from the south, the north branch from the north, of course. Today, this is the trophy case of architecture here in Chicago. This is where some of our most beautiful, technologically advanced buildings lie. Straight in front of us, kind of looks like a Hot Pocket or a McDonald's Apple Pie Box, this is River Point. Now this plot of land actually sat empty for many, many years. We did not know what to build here. Why is that? Well, see these circular...